So identifying ionic compounds, 5.7. Um, the key here for identifying ionic compounds is metal and nonmetal. So if you have a metal and one or more nonmetals together, you can safely assume that it's ionic. The rules we learn in Chem 20 do not cover all of chemistry. Okay, there's some other categories we won't talk about, but for the purposes of this class, if it starts with a metal, either the name or the formula, it's ionic. Okay, so it's pretty easy to identify those guys. That's why we talked on the periodic table about how do we know whether something's a metal or a nonmetal. We need to know that for nomenclature. Okay, so ionic compounds are divided into two groups. The first group is compounds where the metal forms only one type of ion. And those are the ones we've talked about. Um, group 1A, 2A, 3A. The charge on that ion is the same as the charge. Um, the charge on the ion is the same as the group number. There are also some other ones that form more than one type of ion, and these are pretty much the transition metals. We can't predict their charge from the periodic table. So um, they typically call these type 1 and type 2, and I don't get hung up on that name, but it kind of makes sense. The type 1 compounds have a metal that forms one type of ion. The type 2 compounds have metals that form two or more types of ions. So let's see here. The, the type 1, the ones that always have the same charge are going to be the group 1A, 2A metals, aluminum in group 3A, and zinc and silver. So you have to memorize zinc and silver. Um, the way I remember this, you find aluminum on the periodic table and you see that zinc is diagonal down to the left and silver is diagonal down to the left of that. That's like going down the stairs. So aluminum's plus three, you remember that because it's in group three. And as you go down the stairs, what's one less than three? Two. Two, thank you. And what's one less than one? No, what's one less than two? One, okay. So aluminum's plus three, zinc is plus two, silver's plus one. There's a pattern there. Plus three, plus two, plus one. You have to memorize zinc and silver. The type two, two uh, compounds have metals that form other, more than one charge, and most of those are transition metals, but not all. But we'll call them anything that's not in that first group, right? <laughs> Pardon me? Are we supposed to memorize aluminum 3 plus as well? Well, you can either memorize it or remember the rule that it's in group 3A, so it's plus 3. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's a table of the ones that are the charges invariant. They always form the same charge, and it's predictable from the periodic <coughs> table. So that might be helpful to refer to. These are the ones that form more than one type of ion. There's two kinds of names here. Um, these are called the systematic names, and this is called the stock system. And that older system is uh, sometimes used, and unfortunately they used it in your, in your lab that we did on Thursday. I don't teach that, and I won't ask, it to you, ask you to, to do that on an exam. Um, because if you come across one of those, you can just look it up, right? So they had ick and us suffixes, but then you had to remember which was, you know, was it plus two and plus three, or was it plus three and plus four, or plus two and plus four? It's just not a really good system. The, the, the newer system with the Roman numerals, the Roman numerals tell us what the charge is. So here, Cr2 plus is chromium 2. Cr3 plus is chromium 3. Okay? The, the Roman numeral tells us the charge. It's not telling us how many of that ion are in the formula. That's the common mistake students make. So you might help find it helpful to refer to that. 
The one weird one, which I will do my best to avoid on an exam, is HG2 2+. Plus. That's a weird one. Um, it is actually a diatomic ion, but if you, if you broke it down to charge per atom, what would the charge be? One. It'd be one, and so that's why that's called mercury one. So that's a weird one. So how to name these um, type one ions? It's pretty simple. You've got the name of the cation and the name of the anion. Um, the charge on these ions is always the same, and so we don't have to specify it in the name. And the metal always goes first, and then the nonmetal. Metals are like men, and nonmetals are like women in my strange chemistry imaginary world. And so, you know, you address an invitation, a formal invitation. It's Mr. and Mrs., right? Why? It's convention. It's just how we do it. There's no value judgment or anything. It's just Mr. and Mrs. Always. So it's metal, non-metal. It's always the metal first and then the non-metal. Um, and just to remind you, um, those anions that are non-metals, we take like chlorine and we change the ending to chloride. So I believe we have some examples here. So NaCl. First thing to do is to look at it and ask yourself that first element, is it a metal? Na. You find it in the periodic table, it's way on the left, it's a metal, therefore this is an ionic compound, we'll use the ionic rules. So then we have to name the sodium ion, and we find that the name of that is just sodium. It doesn't have a Roman numeral because it's in group one. So group one, two, three, or zinc and silver, no Roman numeral. The base name for the anion is chlorine, and we change that to ide, and so we get this full name of sodium chloride. The name of the first ion, the name of the second ion. Almost all of the element, I'm sorry, compound names that we'll see are going to have two words, just like most humans go by two names, a first name and a last name. Occasionally you find somebody who has, um, who goes by their middle name as well, and occasionally you find somebody with just one name, right? So we find that with the elements as well. So there's a table, just in case you get confused, of the common anions and what their names and charges are. So refer to that as you're learning but then eventually you have to be able to do all of this from just a standard unmarked up periodic table. So here's some more examples. Name the compound KBr. Is it ionic? Krypton bromide. Krypton bromide. That's a good guess. Is 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 K a metal? K is a metal. Potassium. 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 I thought you said calcium. Yeah, potassium. potassium, yes. So K is a metal, and its, um, its name is potassium. So potassium. Does it need a Roman numeral? No, because it's in group one. And then bromine becomes bromide. Um, no, bromide can be um, by itself in a solution. Okay. It's bromine if it's the atom or the diatomic molecule. These guys are bromine, and this is bromide. Okay. So when, when it gets a charge, its name changes. Just like conventionally when a woman gets married, she changes her name. When a man gets married, he typically does not change his name, right? When, when the metal becomes an ion, it's still the metal's name. Weird, huh? Yeah, it's kind of scary, all these correlations. You'd almost think they're human or something. Not really. Okay, ZN3, N2. Well, zinc, that's a metal, right? 
Does it need a Roman numeral? Yes. No, it doesn't because that's one of those two that we have to memorize. So the rule is if it's in group one, two, or three, or zinc or silver, then it does not use a Roman numeral. And then nitrogen is the other element, and that becomes nitride. And we don't need to do anything with the three or the two because the charges on those ions that we know from the periodic table would tell us what number of them to put together, right? Because if we were doing this backwards, we would see that zinc is 2 plus and nitrogen is 3 minus, and we'd do that crisscross thing, and we'd end up with that formula. So we don't need anything to tell us how many there are. So you wouldn't use the tri or tri? No. We, we wouldn't use tri. It would not be tri zinc dinitrogen. So the negative is always the last? Mm -hmm. Positive ion first, then negative ion. Yep, always. Or metal, non metal. Metal, non metal. It's going to be the same. So, these type 2 binary ionic compounds. Okay, the only difference here is that these are the metals that don't have a predictable charge, and so we have to tell the reader what charge the ion has, and we do that with the Roman numeral. You guys remember your Roman numerals? They're a little weird. You know, one is one line, two is two lines, three is three lines, and then four is one less than five. Five is a V. And then six is one more than five. And seven is two more than five. And yeah. Can you imagine doing math? It's probably why the Roman Empire collapsed. It's their <laughs> poor numbering system. So here are two examples. Copper plus and copper two plus. So copper forms two different ions. And you can't tell from the periodic table which two it forms. We'll find that some of them are 2 and 3, some of them are 1 and 2. At least one of them is 2 and 4, skips 3. Um, there's, no, there's no pattern I can tell you in this class that will help you figure that out. So we just use the Roman numerals and it's easy. So copper with a plus 1 charge is copper 1. Those, the Roman numerals in parentheses and there's no space. Okay, so it's just stuck on the end of its name. And copper 2 plus is copper 2 ion. So then when we name these, we've got the name of the metal cation, and we've got the charge on that ion in parentheses here, Roman numerals, and then we have the base name. So really this part's the only difference, and we just throw that in there because we can't tell what the charge is. I think students would like it if we put Roman numerals on everything, because then at least it would be, you know, consistent. We wouldn't have to remember which ones do and which ones don't. But we try not to write stuff we don't need, and so we don't write it for the others. So what if you have this compound, and like here's an example, FeCl3, we look at the periodic table and we see that iron is one of those ions that needs a Roman numeral. How do we figure out what the charge is? <laughs> we have to look at the other ion. So we look at chlorine is negative one, and so if we have three of those, what's up? Three of these would give us a total of a negative three charge, and then we look and we see that we have one iron in there. So if we've got a total of negative 3, then this must be 3 plus. And so we have to figure it out. So we do have a little bit of math in here, but it's limited to small whole numbers. Okay. So we remember that the sum of all charges must be 0, and so we figure out the charge. And then when we name this, It would be iron three chloride. I'm having troubles with my pen today. It's probably because my children have been playing games on my iPad all weekend, 
and I forgot to clean the screen and it's kind of greasy. Children are so fun. So we kind of went over that one just now. Mm -hmm. We'll skip that. Other examples. Okay, so let's name these guys. PBO. So right now we're just doing ionic compounds, but um, we're going to be mixing it up. So we need to get in the habit of looking at that first element. Is it a metal? Yes. The next question is, does it need a Roman numeral? Does lead need a Roman numeral? It does. It's not a transition element, but it's not in group one, two, or three. Right? It's not zinc or silver. So everything else, whether it's a transition metal or not, needs a Roman numeral. Is lead a metal? Yeah. I mean, we, we've seen lead, right? Um, and we also tell by it being to the left of that <coughs> stair-step line. So we know that the name here is going to be lead, and we need a Roman numeral. And then the oxygen is going to be what? Oxide. Oxide. So we have to pull this guy apart to see what charge is on the, on the lead. So oxide has what charge? Negative 2. And we've got one of those, and we've got one lead, so it must be plus 2, right? Because that's the only way their charges are going to balance out. So this is lead 2 oxide. There is also a lead for oxide, and its formula is different. Well, this is an unfortunate example because we already did that guy. But let's make it into something else. Um, well, the, the thinker, the thinker brain is not working well here. Okay. Um, MN3P2. That'll be fun. So MN is what element? Manganese. Manganese. Mm -hmm. so, sounds like something you do to your knees. Manganese. <laughs> and phosphorus as an ion is what? Phosphide. Now, manganese is a metal and it needs a Roman numeral. It's right there in the middle section. So we have to figure out what the charge is. Sometimes you can uncrisscross. And so let's let's try that and see if it works. So if we were to uncrisscross, then manganese would have a two plus and phosphorus would have a 3 minus. Does phosphorus have a 3 minus charge? It does. We look at the periodic table and that's correct. So if you uncrisscross and you get the right charge on the nonmetal, you're, you're good. It's not always going to work. So this is manganese 2 phosphide. If it doesn't work out that way, then you have to look and say, well, I've got two phosphides, and they're each minus three. So that's a total of minus six. So I need a total of plus six over here. So, and I've got three manganese, and I need to know what the charge is so that that adds up to plus six. So it's got to be two, right? So there's two different ways to find the charges. Any questions? Do it one more time. So I looked at the phosphorus and its charge and its number of ions. There's two phosphide ions in this compound, so 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So if it's a total of negative 6, there must be a total plus 6 charge. So over here we've got plus 6, and that's divided among 3. So that's B2 on each, okay? Um, we also have ionic compounds that have polyatomic ions, and we memorize these. Remember those eights, nitrate, chlorate, phosphate? Those were in the memorization quiz. So here are 
um, some of the common ones. Just want to point out a couple of them to you. This one is hydrogen carbonate. Do you see how that's related to carbonate? It's got a hydrogen on the front, hence the name hydrogen carbonate. Okay, so when hydrogen carbonate makes a compound with something, you're going to end up with a compound with three names. Like Mary Ann Jones. You know, two, two names there, plus the last name. Um, and the, the charge there is different. Carbonate is two minus. Hydrogen carbonate is one minus, because what's being added is a hydrogen ion. Hydrogen, I've told you, is an exception to everything. It can form plus one ions and minus one ions. He just, you know, he doesn't have to obey the rules. Um, over here, this guy is hydrogen phosphate. And here we have hydrogen sulfate. And, I'm oh, sorry, that's hydrogen sulfite. And this is hydrogen sulfate. Now, these are also sometimes called bicarbonate or bisulfate. And that's what your, um, your lab manual used. I don't use that, and then, so we won't have that on a test. It's good to know that that's what that is. Sodium bicarbonate, you may have heard of, is baking soda. Okay. So, well, let's just do that. What would be the formula for sodium bicarbonate? Yeah, sodium is a plus one ion, and bicarbonate, or hydrogen carbonate, is a minus one ion, and so there's no crisscross or anything, just push them together, and so sodium bicarbonate is NaHCO3, and that's what's in the little yellow box, keeping your refrigerator fresh, or making your cookies not be flat and yucky, okay, it's sodium bicarbonate, it's a chemical, <gasps> yeah, there's chemicals everywhere. So these polyatomic ions, you just got to know those. The oxyions, the oxyanions um, are anions that have oxygen in them. Crazy name, huh? And I talked about this a little bit in, in lab on Thursday. So there's a pattern here. You memorize the one that, that ends in eight. So you memorize the one that ends, that was, how did I do that? That's, that's skipping. You memorize the one that starts, that ends in eight, not starts, okay? The one that has one fewer oxygens is the light version. Like Bud Light has fewer calories than regular Bud, right? So the light version has fewer oxygens. So nitrite has one less oxygen. The charges stay the same. Isn't that nice? Something's staying the same. Sulfate, sulfite. Okay? So spelling here matters. Okay? You've maybe heard, you know, been concerned about nitrites in your pr processed deli meats and bacon and stuff. Nitrites are bad for you. Nitrates, not so much. One letter difference, one oxygen difference, but one's, one's fine and one's not so fine. Okay, so here's the table showing the whole, whole pattern. So we have um, prefixes then. Hypo means less than or below, like a hypodermic needle goes below your skin, your dermis. Per is like the last part of hyper, meaning more than. So hyperactive is extra active, more energy. Per chlorate has one more oxygen than chlorate. So there's perchlorate, chlorate, chlorite, and then hypochlorite is one less even than that. And we see the same, same pattern for bromine, iodine, and chlorine.
they are like sisters over there. They're in the halogen family, and they form the same compounds with oxygen, and their names follow the same pattern. So there are, what, um, 12 ions there? So if you memorize that chlorate is ClO3 minus, and that ite is one less oxygen, hypoite is even one less, and per is one more than the eight, and that those sisters in the family act the same, you can write the names and formulas for 12 ions from that. I think that's a pretty good bang for your brain power or something. Um, and just a note here when you're doing the homework, and it asks you, you know, what's, what's the name for BRO minus? And you type in hypobromite, and it's going to say, eh, try again. It wants you to write the word ion in there, hypobromite ion. So it's going to be picky about that. It's not, I won't be picky about that on an exam, but technically ion is part of its name. Um, this is just kind of interesting. Um, we're low on time, so I'll let you read that on your own. Examples. We have lots of examples. Okay, so name this compound. First thing is we look at the first element and ask ourselves, is it a metal? Yes, it is. It's manganese. Okay. And then, so I'm going to, the first word is going to be manganese, and then I need to ask myself, does it need a Roman numeral? Where is it in the periodic table? It's not in group 1, 2, 3, zinc or silver, so it needs a Roman numeral. So I'm just going to leave space for it. And then, this guy. Those parentheses tell us that we have two of that group. It's like a shrink-wrapped bundle pack. The parentheses are the shrink-wrap around the polyatomic ion. So we're looking at what's inside the parentheses, NO2. Well, is that similar to something I made you memorize? It's similar to nitrate. Nitrate was NO3 minus. This is NO2 minus. It has the same charge, but it's got one less oxygen. So it is nitrite, because this is the light version, nitrite. And so now we have to figure out what's the charge on that manganese ion. It must be plus 2, because we have two of these guys, and they're each minus 1. So we've got a total of negative 2 charge. We want to have a total of positive 2 charge. And there's only one of them there, so he must have both of those charges. So manganese 2 nitrite. There is one correct name for almost all of these guys. The exception is the bisulfate or hydrogen sulfate. So there, there's a tiny variation, but those guys are unfortunate. How do you know there's two nitrites if you're reading that? Because of this right here. I mean, like, you're in the bottom one where it says manganese T nitrite. Oh. Nitrite is what tells you there's two of them? Um, the relationship between the charges. So if we were taking manganese 2 nitrite and making the formula from it, we would first have to write these guys. Oh. So we'd have to write the ions with their charges. The charges tell us how many. Okay. That's a good point. So let's do this guy. CO is what element? Cobalt. Notice that's a lowercase o. Does cobalt need a Roman numeral? Yes. yes, it does. So we'll worry about what that is later. CO3, what's that? Carbonate. That's carbonate. That's one I made you memorize. What's the charge on carbonate ion? 2 minus. So we've got one carbonate, that's 2 minus, and we've got one cobalt, so it must be 2 plus. Okay? Yes? Um, sorry, on the last one, we just had uh, on the two, since it has uh, the nitrate, and it has that.